So I reviewed this um, this book, uh, Open Circuits, The Inner Beauty, and they have some wonderful uh, photographs in here. One of the techniques that they use to capture these is something called um, image stacking. And this particular front picture here on the cover is an image stack. It's very, very difficult to use a microscope or, or a macro lens to get such a large depth of field. Uh, back in the day, you needed to have a very, very small aperture in order to, to do things like this. There was like the F64 Club uh, that used big view cameras, and they had these very, very small little um, apertures to get really, really large depth of fields. But now you can just take a whole bunch of pictures at different focal lengths and stitch them all together. So I'm going to show that today. Um, the program Helicon. Let me open it up here. So this is Helicon. This is Helicon Focus 8.2.2. Uh, so I have registered this for a year. Um, it was $30 uh, to, to use for a year. And they also have a lifetime license, which is around $120, something like that. Anyway, uh, before we get to the program itself, I want to show you the results. So let me just kind of give you a brief description of what it does. And then I'll show you a couple examples of photographs. And then we'll actually do one ourselves. okay? So, um, so this is a picture of a watch. And you can see that it's, it's nicely in focus everywhere, right? Well, you can't just take that picture, okay? What you do is you take a movie, okay? So this is the movie that I took, and you adjust the focus as you're taking the movie. So you can see that it was in focus on one side, and then it was in focus uh, focus near the back. And then as I move it, it gets closer and closer and closer. But there is information in each one of the frames of this, of this uh, movie that you can extract to build up something that looks like this. So this is the result of, of this uh, Helicon program, okay? Uh, here's another example. Uh, so this is the backside of a watch. Um, it, it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I really, really like this thing. It's really fun to take photographs um, that are pretty much impossible any other way. Uh, let's see, this was a... Uh, a PC board. You can see the PC board just keeps being in focus no matter how far away. This the board over here in the upper left was a long ways away and it managed to get everything. Now, this one has some artifacts that I need to learn how to control. So you can see on this uh, connector here, uh, there it didn't know how quite to get this tab in the back. I mean, anyway, it failed and it kind of just blurred it out a little bit. So um, it's not perfect. It did get this reflection good here in this uh, thing. So I'm just learning how, how to do it correctly. Like here's some blurring underneath this. I had the uh, part kind of floating up above the uh, uh, the um, table. So there was some gap there. So I think it doesn't quite know how to do different planes that aren't exactly in the same places that expects them and stuff. Anyway, it's part of their algorithm. But I'm sure if you just learn what it can do and what it can't do. You can just avoid avoid these corner cases. Um, this looks like a very, very simple photograph to take just with a normal camera, but no, you really can't. There is, there is quite a big uh, change in distance between the foreground and the background. This would be a very, very difficult picture to take um, without this, without this uh, uh, stacking program. So that was pretty cool. Uh, let's see, what are there some other, uh, other examples here? Uh, let's see, not this one, that one didn't come out very good. Uh, this one's pretty good. So this just kind of shows some bond wires off here to a, uh, a CCD sensor, or a CMOS imager sensor. Um, and these bond wires are different heights, and so they're not completely in focus from top to bottom in, in a high-powered microscope. And so it was able to... It was able to stitch things together quite nicely. Um, this actually has quite a bit of depth to it. This is a, uh, a microwave, or not a microwave, but a, um, I think this is probably good up to a couple of gigahertz. It's a mixer. Uh, so the center piece here is the four diodes, and then there's two transformers on the, on the input and the output. Um, so you're able to take some pretty nice, pretty nice 
uh, macro photographers with us. And um, all of the pictures that I've shown where I was using a microscope, I wasn't using an expensive microscope. I was using that um, uh, kind of cheapy microscope that it was given to me by a company. Um, and it does just, it does seem to do a fairly decent job. Um, I was trying to photograph a saw filter. Um, so this is a, like a TO5 can, and there was a saw filter in it. And I wanted to take a macro uh, a, a photograph of the actual um, quartz, quartz saw crystal. And uh, I was able to get a pretty good pretty good looking image of it. You can see there's a clear clear thing. It's set in like a white glue sit down in there. And uh, yeah, it came out it came out pretty pretty good. There's a little bit of funniness here on this uh, bond wire here, but for the most part, I think it's it's doing a really good job. And this is again with that kind of cheapy microscope. So yeah, it's doing a if I've taken some pictures with my really good microscope, I'm going to get some fantastic things. So uh, yeah, this is really handy. Um, let's see here, but let's go ahead and show you how this works. Okay. So we'll open up the, uh, program and you can just drag things into it. So I'm going to take that, uh, uh, video of the front of a stopwatch. Okay. I think that one ex explains things really well. Okay. So now it's loaded in, right? The movie's loaded in and then you just hit render and, uh, it will go through and try to figure out what things are in focus and what things are, are, are not in focus. And then it tries to find edges and does an edge um, extraction out of the image. And there's the edge extraction. Now it knows where everything is supposed to be. And then poof, it puts them all together and gives you the, the image. And then you can just hit save and save it away. So that's all there is to it. I mean, that's it. It's super trivial. It used to be that you had to take a picture and then you moved, move the focus, then take another picture, then move the focus, and take a picture. This is just, you take a movie and you're done. Um, yeah, it, it is super, super easy. Let me see if I have any other, I didn't, I should have saved all the movies. I didn't save the movies for a lot of these things. I only saved some of the movies. Um, I hope we can do this one, I guess. I guess it's fine. We'll do the backside. It has a lot more edges and stuff. So here is the uh, movie. And we will hit render. And once again, it just steps through all of the pictures. And then it will. Uh, try to find the edges now. There we go. All the edges are found. And then it thinks and thinks and puts it all together. Poof, there you go. And then you can do saving. Um, there is a retouching, uh, section that I don't know anything about, and there is a putting text on it and scaling it. Um, and I don't know anything about that either. Isn't it? So anyway, it has more, more going on than just uh, what I've shown, but I haven't learned those things yet. But, uh, yeah, I really, really like it. So, um, yeah, I recommend you go, uh, check that out if you're interested in doing photographs like this. Um, a friend of mine was the one who showed this to me before I saw the book. Um, and, uh, after I got the book, I said, okay, okay, okay. I guess I really, really need it. He uses it at work. He's, he's building, um, modules for fiber optics and stuff, and he needs to take really good pictures of it and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it seems to do, a seems to do a good job.